So, we're going to be talking about a small single-engine plane, the Beechcraft Bonanza. On board the plane, the pilot, Bruce Hernan, had two passengers, his father and a business partner. They flew out of Andrus Island in the Bahamas and headed northwest, off the coast of Florida on December 4, 1970. If you connect the islands of Bermuda, Puerto Rico, and Miami with a line, you get a triangle. This place is infamous for being a very ominous place, notorious for the fact that over the last few centuries, over 2,000 ships and 200 planes have mysteriously disappeared. Bruce Hernan's plane was no exception to this mysterious fate. Before we go into this mysterious story, don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Now you'll be the first to know about our new releases. It was an ordinary flight that he had done dozens of times before. The journey usually took about an hour and a half without any problems, or of course, any mysterious phenomena. The men on board were no more disturbed than the rest of us on our daily commute, but this time it was going to be different because they were going to have to deal with some really inexplicable and perhaps even mysterious things. Bruce started to gain altitude. Strange things started to happen from the very beginning. At an altitude of about 300 meters, he noticed a small cloud ahead of him, which suddenly started to grow. It wasn't because the plane was getting closer, the cloud was actually increasing in size. Bruce had to fly through it, and another mysterious cloud appeared at an altitude of 3,500 meters. It was so huge that Bruce had no other choice but to fly through it as well. So he concentrated, took a deep breath, and the plane entered the cloud. Around the plane, it got dark as night, and no ray of light could be seen, but it wasn't a storm cloud, and it wasn't raining. Bruce began to worry. Suddenly, he saw flashes of white light that would suddenly appear and then disappear with the speed of lightning. But the pilot knew for a fact they weren't lightning bolts. The flashes were so bright that they illuminated all around them. Bruce had been flying for another half an hour when he suddenly realized it was the same cloud that he had flown through earlier when he gained altitude. But this time, the cloud had a cylindrical shape, and the plane was right in the middle of it. It was more than a kilometer wide and seemed endless. Bruce thought there was no way he'd ever be able to get out of the trap, but after a minute, he saw the light at the end of the tunnel. He had the steering wheel straight ahead and thought he had almost escaped the nightmare. Suddenly, inexplicable things started happening again. The walls of the cloudy tunnel began to narrow and approach the plane. One by one, the navigational instruments malfunctioned. The compass was spinning counterclockwise and all electronic instruments seemed to be malfunctioning, as if the plane was being flown by someone else or was moving on its own inside some kind of current. Bruce's attempts to regain control were in vain. He was determined to fly through the strange tunnel and get out alive to tell his story. The walls kept getting narrower, swirling like a whirlwind. Bruce knew he had to get out as soon as possible. The next 20 seconds were the most stressful of his life, but he finally emerged from the foggy trap. As Bruce later described, for five seconds after leaving the tunnel, he felt weightless. The clouds had cleared and the plane was flying in a grayish haze. All the men breathed a sigh of relief. Bruce immediately contacted ground control to pinpoint his location, but the dispatcher was surprised to see that the plane wasn't on the radar, it was like it was completely invisible. But still, the dispatcher announced that the plane was already in the airspace of Miami. Bruce was stunned the Beechcraft had only traveled a distance of 400 kilometers and it was not physically possible to reach Miami in just 47 minutes. But when the clouds cleared, Bruce saw that he was indeed over Miami. The plane landed safely and it was time to try to solve the mystery. Then, he checked the remaining fuel and his watch, but after quick calculations, he was even more confused. The plane hadn't used as much fuel as it should have. Bruce couldn't have been wrong, he was a very experienced pilot with over 600 hours of flying by the time he was 20. Besides, he knew this airspace like the back of his hand, having flown on this route countless times. 
the evidence clearly pointed to the fact that Bruce's plane had somehow skipped almost halfway all the way to Miami. Bruce pondered this strange occurrence for quite some time and even consulted with professors and experts, but none of them could explain what had happened that day. So, he came up with his own theory and even wrote a book about it, concluding that it was because of an electrical fog with white flashes. Others, however, suggested that this jump in time was caused by dark energy, the same energy that makes our universe expand and could warp space and time like a black hole, creating a strange tunnel in which Bruce was trapped by accident, and he was very lucky to get out of it. That's why he ended up so quickly in Miami airspace. But dark energy is just a theory trying to explain the unexplainable, and still, how could the plane have traveled this distance in such a short time? That's a question that still hasn't been answered. However, some of the details can be explained. Archival records show that on that day there were 84 sunspots recorded, as well as an enormous solar wind moving at a velocity of about 700 kilometers per second. This could have caused a disturbance in the Earth's magnetosphere, knocking out all the instruments and radar on the plane. As for the electrical fog, that could have been correct. In the strange clouds, that's a pretty common phenomenon in that area, where low pressure and high pressure zones collide, resulting in thunderstorm clouds. Maybe the cloud growing in front of Bruce's eyes was just two powerful intersecting air currents. But so far, no one has been able to explain how the plane made it all the way to Miami so quickly. Maybe in the future, the truth will be known, but in the meantime, this is going to be another mysterious mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. But, this is far from the most shocking incident in the Bermuda Triangle. In 1945, five planes disappeared in the area at once. On December 5th, several naval cadet pilots were flying training flights and were to navigate, but they couldn't find their way back to the base and got lost. Many believed that they had run out of fuel, but the circumstances were strange. The cadets were led by an experienced lieutenant who had flown over 2,500 hours and wouldn't have allowed a group of rookies to fly far enough to get lost. The incident was called Flight 19 and to this day, the debate as to what exactly happened continues. In the same area, three years later, a passenger plane was flying from Puerto Rico to Miami with 29 passengers and three crew members on board. The weather was clear throughout the flight, but experts believe that high winds threw the plane off course about 80 kilometers off the coast of Miami. Years later, divers found a similar plane in the water, but it was missing some details and registration information, so no one was able to confirm if it was the same missing plane that had flown to Miami. The next month, in January 1948, another plane went missing in the Bermuda Triangle with 25 passengers and six crew members on board, somewhere between the Azores Islands and Bermuda. The mystery of this plane's disappearance, along with countless others, remains unsolved. 